We are continuing in this series that I started a few weeks ago on the habits of happiness as we go through the book of Philippians. And chapter three, Paul gives us another five habits of happiness. Now, all five of these you can do on a daily basis. All five of these habits you can do during a, oh, say a 15 minute quiet time where you spend alone with God. And if you will build these five habits into your life, the happiness in your life will exponentially grow and the unhappiness in your life will decline. Philippians chapter three, let's get right into it. The first habit that Paul models here in uh, the first few verses is this. Every day, relax in God's grace. That's the first thing you need to do if you wanna be a happy person. Every day, relax in God's grace. Don't try to earn God's approval. Don't try to earn his love. Don't try to earn his, his recognition. You don't earn it. God is love, and God loves you unconditionally. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. We Christians glory in what Jesus has done. Circle that, has done. Past tense. On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. I've done it all. What Jesus Christ has done for us, and we realize that we are helpless to save ourselves. We're not trying to earn our way to heaven. We're not trying to work our way to heaven. We're not trying to prove we're good enough to get to heaven because none of us are good enough to get to heaven. Now in the next verse, verse seven, we get the second daily habit of happiness and it's this. Remember what matters most. Every day I need to remember what matters most. When I get up in the morning, I need to remind myself what counts and what doesn't count. Jim Elliott, the famous missionary said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep for that which he cannot lose. Yeah, I'm giving up a lot of things here that other people think are really important right now. They don't mean anything to me because I'm gaining eternal life and rewards in heaven that I cannot lose. So the second habit is I remember what matters most. Tom's gonna come and talk about the third habit for happiness. The third habit is Get to know Jesus better. Get to know Jesus better. You should start every morning when you wake up saying, Lord, if I don't get anything else today, anything else done, I want to get to know you a little bit better. I want to love you a little bit more. Listen, you were made, I was made to live in relationship with God. And if I think I can be joyful without getting to know him better, the thing I was made for, I'm just fooling myself. A lot of you, you've had a taste of joy here or there, and you're just reaching for it all the time. Where is the joy found in our lives? It's found in the number one thing we were created for, getting to know God a little bit better. Paul discovered that. He says in Philippians 3.10, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death so that somehow I might be raised to life. If you want to get to know God better, you got to spend time with him. If you want to spend time with him, you got to make time for him. Now, the fourth habit that you need to develop, and as I said, you can do all of these in about 15 minutes a day, is this. Review where I need to grow. You need to every day do a little personal review of your life. Take a couple minutes out of every day during your quiet time with God and you do a spiritual daily checkup. You take your spiritual pulse. You can do it during your quiet time. You say, Lord, where do I need to grow? What do I need to work on? Where am I weak? Where do you want me to be stronger? A good verse, you might write this verse down, is Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Be a good verse to memorize. It goes like this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, test me, and know my thoughts. See if there's anything evil or wicked in my life and lead me in the way that's everlasting. That's a good verse. That's, I call that the searchlight verse. And I usually say this in the morning. I say, okay, God, do a little heart check right now. Do a little spiritual uh, EEG and EKG. And, and tell me, what do I need to work on today? Where do I keep growing? This takes humility, but it's a habit that will lead to happiness. You see, following Jesus is a decision followed by a process the rest of your life. You can't follow without walking. You gotta have movement. So following Jesus is a decision followed by a process. 
A lot of you have made the decision, but you haven't continued in the process. Some of you men in particular, you're in the family of God. You said, yes, I've trusted Jesus for my salvation. I know there's no way I'm gonna go to heaven on my own merit, but you've never really grown. You've never taken, you're, you're too far to the beginning part. You haven't moved on. It's like the mom who heard about her uh, uh, thud in the middle of the night and she gets up and goes into the bedroom and finds out her son has fallen out of bed on the floor. And she said, how did you do that? He said, well, I guess I stayed too close to where I got in. <laughs> and some of you have stayed too close to where you got in and you haven't grown in your Christian life. You're saved, but you're not growing. And this is where you need to do a daily checkup, say, where do I need to grow today? Do I need to work on, on anger? Do I need to work on patience? Do I need to work on getting rid of jealousy? Do I need to work on watching my words? Do I need to work on being more relaxed in your grace? Philippians 12, uh, 3, verses 12 and 13, Paul talks about this fourth habit. He says, I don't mean to say I'm perfect. And of course, he wasn't, because none of us are. He says, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I still haven't learned all I should. In other words, he realizes it's a growth process. I'm not perfect. I haven't learned all I should, but I keep working. I keep working toward that day. I keep working toward that day when I will finally, finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers, I'm still not all I should be. Now to me, that verse is one of the most amazing verses in the Bible because it's written by the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. Paul is an older man, he's elderly, he's in prison in Rome, he's at the end of life, he's an incredibly mature person and yet he says, I haven't arrived. I, I, if anybody had the right to say, I've arrived spiritually, I would think it'd be the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. But Paul says, no, I haven't arrived. I'm up in years, I'm up in age, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, I'm still becoming more like Christ. I'm not just sitting on my blessed assurance and waiting out the end of my life. No, no, he says, I'm humble and I keep growing and keep growing. Now what's the trap that'll keep you from doing this? Write it down, pride. Pride will keep you from growing because when I pretend that I've got it all together, then I don't have it all together. Now, we already know you don't have it all together. God knows you don't have it all together. You're the only one who won't admit you don't have it all together. So you might as well stop being prideful because we already know you don't have it all together. And you're not teasing anybody. It's not like you know the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the, the, the curtain. We, we know you don't have it all together. And humility leads to happiness because it makes you teachable. Happy people never stop growing. Happy people never stop learning. Happy people never stop discovering, never stop stretching, never stop learning. If you've stopped growing, I can tell you, you're miserable because you were made to grow. You were made to learn. You were made to be better next year than you are this year. And if you're just coasting, whenever you're coasting, you're headed downhill. Every time you coast, you're heading downhill. So really, if you want to be happy, happiness and humility go together because humility says, I'm teachable. Where do I need to learn? Okay, how can I be a better husband this next year? How can I be a better dad this next year? How can I be a better boss this next year? How can I be a better employer? How can I be a better employee? How can I be a better friend to my friends this next year? And you doing this daily habit of reviewing where do I need to grow? I relax in God's grace. You know, okay, I, I relax in God's grace. And I, and I let God show me his love. And I remember what matters most. And I make the number one goal of my life to get to know Jesus every day. But during that time, I also say, okay, where do I need to keep growing? Now, the secret to growth is to be honest about yourself and to keep evaluating uh, where you are. And this is what Paul says. Look at 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Paul says, test yourselves. Do you ever do that? Test yourselves to make sure you're solid in the faith. In other words, do a daily checkup. Review where you need to grow. Take your spiritual pulse. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need firsthand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. 
And if you fail the test, do something about it. I love that in the message. Now, there's one other habit. And this is the fifth daily habit for happiness found in Philippians chapter three, and it's this. Every day, forget what can't be changed and focus on the future. That is a habit of happiness. Every day, forget what can't be changed and focus in, on the future. Not on the past. Your past is past. It's over. It's done. And all the worrying won't change the past at all, one bit. So forget what can't be changed and focus on the future. Now, let's just be honest. You have been hurt a lot in your past. I'm sorry. As your pastor, as somebody who loves you, as somebody who prays for you, I, I know that you have been hurt a lot. And I've heard the stories. Many people hurt severely. Emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse. All, and you've been hurt in many, many, many ways. And I'm sorry about that. Happiness requires letting go and learning to forget. Happiness requires letting go of the hurt and learning to forget. You see, you can hold on to your pain. Nobody's gonna force you to let it go. You can hold on to that pain. You can hold on to that memory or you can be happy, but you can't be both. So you gotta choose. So why don't you choose today? I'm gonna stop letting the pain of my past control my happiness in the present. Let it go. Today, I want to ask you to join with Daily Hope as we focus on fulfilling the great commission of Jesus Christ. You know sharing Jesus with others is the most important thing you can do. And if we join together, we can reach across the whole world with the message of Christ. Now, right now, through Daily Hope, the good news of Jesus reaches into almost every country of the world, including regions where it's difficult or dangerous to share the gospel. And it's even being translated into 25 different languages and counting. And by translating into these 25 languages, we're able to reach over 80% of the world's population. That's why I'm so excited to tell you that some incredibly generous friends have stepped forward and offered to double every single dollar you give in support of Daily Hope. Thanks to the matching grant, your gift will now go twice as far and together we can watch God transform the lives of people with the hope of Jesus Christ. When you give a gift to Daily Hope, you're helping share the hope of Jesus with people everywhere. And right now, your gift will be doubled by a $25,000 matching grant. Here's what Paul says in verse 13 and 14. I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. Now, circle the phrase, focusing all my energies. You only have a limited amount of energy. You don't have unlimited energy. That's why you get tired. That's why you get fatigued. That's why you get worn out, because you don't have an unlimited supply of energy. You're a human being. Since you only have a limited supply of energy, I highly recommend you not waste any of it on the past. Don't waste any emotional energy. Don't waste another second of your life on the past. The past is past. Would you like to change it? Yeah. Can you? No. So forget it. Forget it. Use all your emotional energy on today because that's all you've got. You can't even use it on tomorrow because you're not there yet. Don't waste. I focus all my energy 
by forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Now this habit is so important to your happiness, there are three traps you have to be aware of. And you're gonna have to deal with these in order to live a happy life. Number one is the trap of regret. You gotta let go of regrets. That's stuff that I wish I'd done differently. You know, we all second guess ourselves. Are there things I wish I'd done differently in your life? In life? Are you kidding me? Of course there are. But I can't dwell on them because the past is past and I can't change it. It's done. So I'm not gonna waste any emotion on, on regrets. That's the stuff I've done wrong. The second trap is unforgiveness or resentment. And that's the stuff that people have done to you. You've done bad things. That's guilt, shame, regret. And people have done bad things to you. That's resentment, unforgiveness, and bitterness. Either way, you get stuck in the past. What I've done wrong or what other has done wrong to me, either way, you get stuck in the past. Holding on to resentment is dumb. It doesn't hurt anybody but you. The whole time you're thinking about that person who hurt me so bad, they're out there having a steak dinner. (laughs) They're not even thinking about you. So your resentment is not hurting them. The only person you hurt with unforgiveness is you. That's dumb. Let it go. For your own sake, you must forgive. Do they deserve it? No. But do you deserve forgiveness from God? No. Those who experience grace grace are gracious. And you let them off the hook. Why? Because God let you off the hook. And because you don't want to hold on to the pain, you want to let it go. There's one other thing that's going to keep you stuck in the past and cause you to be unhappy, and this one's going to surprise you, but it's, it's a trap, the trap of tradition. Tradition. That it's the famous seven last words. We've always done it that way. <laughs> We've always done famous seven last words. Now, have you noticed that things change? Yeah. Every day, things change. Have you noticed your body is changing? Not for the good. Okay, your body is changing. Relationships change, the weather changes, culture changes, everything is constantly changing. And you cannot stop change. So, you have to decide, I can either get mad and resist and resent these changes that are happening, or I can choose to be happy. Happiness is a choice. You're as happy as you choose to be, remember. And so even in the middle of changes I don't like, I can choose to be happy. I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said, if you dislike change, then irrelevancy is gonna appeal to you even less. (laughs) Because if you don't change with the times, you become irrelevant. Now how you handle change in life reveals your spiritual maturity. It reveals how connected to God you are. The more connected to God you are, you're connected to the eternal, so it doesn't matter what's changing down here. Anything that's in style will be out of style tomorrow. One minute you're a hero, the next minute you're a zero. And and things just constantly change. But if I'm geared and and guided and anchored to eternity, that's never changing, and I'm tuned into God, then change can take over a place all around me, and I can choose to be happy, and I don't resent and uh, regret and get mad and those kind of things. When I think about Saddleback Church and all all the changes our church has been through, you know, I still have with me 60 charter members of Saddleback Church from the first two years, still here. They've been here 33 years. Imagine all the change they've been through. I mean, think about that. All the, it takes, they are enormously spiritually mature people and they're incredibly unselfish. I mean, what if they had said, hey, Rick, we like having 100 people in our church. Let's just keep one little group here. Let's don't go to multiple services. Let's don't go to multiple campuses. Let's don't do all of these different, let's just, keep us. Many of you wouldn't be going to heaven. It was because of their unselfishness, their unwilling, their willingness to change and and park a long distance away in order to make up more space that's caused thousands of people to come to Christ. 
flexibility. I don't know a more flexible church than Saddleback Church. I don't, because we change things up all the time. I mean, for us, long-range planning, six months. <laughs> and, and things change all the time. If you, if you don't like change, this is not the church for you, because things are changing all, because there is no growth without change. And there is no change without loss. You gotta let go of old to grab new. And there is no loss without pain. And a person who wants to grow without going through loss and pain is like a mom saying, I wanna have a baby but not go through labor. They don't call it labor for nothing. There's pain in change. Now every change is uncomfortable in your life. But you're gonna have to forget the past and focus on the future. Every change is uncomfortable, even good changes. Isaiah 43 says this, Isaiah 43, 17, 18. God says, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. That's the fifth habit. Let's bow our heads. Happiness is a choice, and in many ways, it's a matter of the habits you choose to develop. These five habits in Philippians chapter three are all things you can do in about 15 minutes a day during a, a daily quiet time. So I challenge you to make this commitment right now. Say, dear God, just say this in your mind. Dear God, I wanna learn to relax in your grace every day. To not try to earn your approval, but to realize you already love me and you will never love me any less or any more. I wanna reject legalism trying to prove my worth by rules, restrictions, regulations. I want to live by grace, and I want to be gracious to everybody else. And then, Lord, say this. Help me to focus every day on what matters most, to not believe the advertisements, to not spend and waste and worry my life away on things that aren't going to matter even a week from today, much less in eternity. Help me to focus on the eternal, what's gonna last for eternity, not what's in style. And dear God, I wanna make getting to know Jesus better the number one goal of my life. And every day I wanna know you a little bit better and I wanna love you a little bit more. And I wanna spend time with you every day in a quiet time to, to read your word and to pray and to listen in conversation with you. Take the, help me to take these purpose-driven classes of class one, two, three, and four and grow purposefully and progressively more like you. Dear God, I wanna start a daily spiritual checkup that during my quiet time, I'll just say, Lord, where do I need to grow? And help me to forget what can't be changed in my past and help me to let it go and instead help me to focus in faith on the future and what you have in store for me. If you've never opened up your life to Christ, say, Jesus Christ, come into my life right now. I wanna get to know you. I wanna learn to love you, trust you. I don't want a religion. I want a relationship with you. With their heads bowed. If you prayed that prayer, God heard your prayer. He, and if you meant it, you just stepped across the line I pray a blessing on all of our church family in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I want to share a letter from a new listener, Sherman, who's in Tennessee, and he writes that he and his wife use daily hope to study God's word together. Here's what he wrote. Just recently, a friend of mine turned me on to your Daily Hope devotional and also gave me your CD series on the Lord's Prayer. And wow, together, my wife and I now listen to Daily Hope podcast. We take notes, we pray, we have great conversations about all the biblical teachings that we get from you. And we both look forward to that time of being encouraged and challenged and instructed. Now, I know, Pastor Rick, that it was through the giving of other people that made it possible for me to hear the Daily Hope teaching. And so now I want to make an eternal investment myself by giving to this ministry so that others may be blessed and impacted in the same way that my wife and I have been. 
Well, Sherman, I'm so glad to hear that you and your wife are studying the Bible together. Nothing will do more for your marriage. It'll not only help you grow in faith, it will strengthen your marriage. And thank you for your financial gift. Without your help, we wouldn't be able to keep on reaching more and more people around the world with the good news of Jesus. We wouldn't be able to disciple them through the Daily Hope podcast. Because of your prayers and your financial support, we're able to partner working together to reach the world for Christ. So I'm so grateful for you and for your prayers and your financial support. God bless you. Most people look for happiness in all the wrong places. You won't find it through money, fame, or power. You'll only find real, lasting happiness by following God's commands. That's why Pastor Rick created the Habits of Bible study. You'll discover how happiness runs deeper than any circumstance, feeling, or relationship. It's a comprehensive study tool that will help you experience the biblical habits that lead to true and lasting happiness because of God's unconditional love for you. This Bible study is available only on Daily Hope, and quantities are limited. When you give a gift to help Daily Hope share the gospel with people around the world, we'll send you the Habits of Happiness Bible Study to say thanks. And right now your gift will be doubled by a $25,000 matching grant. 